Merry Christmas, And we'll folks. continue after this message and a word from your local station. Oklahoma. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Nance, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the start of our coverage on the road to the Final Four. This world year will be with you all the way up to the National Championship game and the Final Four at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Now you talk about the Final Four, there's one team that's consistently been there the last five years, the Duke Blue Devils. In fact, four of the last five years, Duke has made it to the promised land, including a runner-up finish last April against UNLV. But today, a tough test for Duke as they will go against an Oklahoma team that seems to never lose at home. The Sooners, in fact, have won 51 straight home games. Home for the holidays, you say? Well, Billy Tubbs' bunch wins any time of the year, it seems. But today, they hope to decorate their tree with another ornament as they go against the ninth-ranked Blue Devils. Speaking of holidays, let me extend my warmest wishes to my partner, Billy Packer. Yep. Looking forward to being with you, Billy. When you talk about Duke, you got to start, I guess, with Christian Leitner, the big guy inside. Uh, an excellent basketball player. He's versatile in every area. He can play inside. He's a good defender on the inside. Mike Krzyzewski said yesterday, despite the talent he has from the outside, Leitner may be his best perimeter shooter. One of the nation's very best at 6'10". Game really coming on. He leads the team in scoring and rebounding. And, well, the assist man is Bobby Hurley, who had a record-setting season in assist as a freshman last year. Tremendous durability in this young man. He knows how to push the ball up the floor for Duke. I think this year he's making a little better judgments, and he's trying to be a little bit more of a threat in the scoring, which will help his assist ratio. A lot of the attention in the Oklahoma backcourt deservingly goes to Brent Price. But how about Terry Evans coming on? Well, Duke... In this particular case, both teams blessed in the backcourt. But Terry Evans may be the best of all that Billy Tubbs has had in years. Excellent feeder from the outside. Great range on his jump shot. Excellent floor leader. Again, Oklahoma is ranked 11th, but a whole new front line this year for Billy Tubbs. Kermit Holmes is pulling down some rebounds for him. Extremely quick on the inside, particularly on the offensive board. Seven games this year, double-double scoring and rebounding. He'll be very explosive today. Billy, I mentioned Brent Price. He scored 56 points in the Sooners' last outing. A massive win over Loyola Marymount. He is the younger brother of Mark Price, the NBA All-Star. How about Brent Price? Well, you can see that was a great shot by a great shooter. But when you're having a night like this, a fadeaway jumper off the board from the deep corner, that's a special evening. He puts the ball on the floor very well, can drive to the hoop. He's a hard man to stop. Leads him in scoring, and we talk to him. You know, I started out just looking for the open shot like usual, and um, they just were falling, all of them. And uh, the second half, I kind of got in the rhythm. And then uh, the second half, I really started feeling it. And like you said, you know, it's just the shots started falling, and I, and I started to feel like I couldn't miss. Well, Mike Krzyzewski from Duke and Billy Tubbs of Oklahoma are each in their 11th season. We asked them to size up this game. We're not opposed to running. I don't think we can run as much as they run because they're better at it. They do it for a full 40 minutes. We don't do it for 40 minutes. We need to run good half-court offense, and that's one of the weak areas of our game. We've been working on it since the end of exams about five days ago to try to improve and get Leitner more involved. If we're just running up and down, then all he's doing is wind sprints, and we don't take advantage of him in, inside. And, and he's one of the better players in the country. It'd be stupid of us not to, not to try to do that. 
the defense is the key to the offense. And uh, when our defense is really cooking and we're doing a great job and our intensity level is high on defense, those are the nights that we'll put a lot of points on the board. They are very, very disciplined in their style of play. And a lot of teams, a lot of people don't use the word discipline when they talk about Oklahoma. I think they're extremely disciplined, and we have to make them run it as many times as possible, make them run a half-court offense. Well, Duke will be out to destroy Oklahoma's home court winning streak. It's Duke and Oklahoma starting lineups are next. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. McDonald's, you know the one. It's McDonald's for food, folks, and fun. And by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. The Lloyd Noble Center on the Oklahoma campus. And right now, let's get you the starting lineups from the public address announcer, Mike Treps. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lloyd Noble Center for today's game between the Duke Blue Devils and the Oklahoma Sooners. Now let's meet the starting lineups. First for the Blue Devils of Duke, at forward, a six foot seven freshman from Reston, Virginia, number 33, Grant Hill. At forward, a 6'11 junior from Angola, New York, number 32, Christian Leitner. At center, a 6'9 junior from Arlington, Virginia, number 34, Crawford Palmer. At guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Lancaster, Texas, number 12, Thomas Hill. At guard, a six-foot sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 11, Bobby Hurley. And the coach of Duke in his 11th season, Mike Krzyzewski. And now, introducing your Oklahoma Sooners. At forward, a six-foot-eight freshman from Midwest City, Oklahoma, number 32, Jeff Webster. At forward, a six foot three senior from San Francisco, California, number 24, Terrence Mullen. At center, a six foot seven senior from Oak Mulgee, Oklahoma, number 25, Kermit Sherlock Holmes. At guard, a six foot one sophomore from Oklahoma City, number 14, Terry Evans. At guard, a six foot one junior from Enid, Oklahoma, number 20, Brent Price. And the coach of the Sooners in his 11th season, Billy Cutts. Well, these two have met only one time. It was 1986. Duke won that one. We'll come back and get this one started in just a moment. DC versus Big Eight today, and Billy, an all Big Eight officiating crew. Well, Jim, they played down at Duke a few years ago. It was an ACC crew. Billy Tubbs thought it should be a Big Ten crew, so he's got his day today in the fact that he's got Big Eight officials here. Mike Krzyzewski took the position. Officials will not win or lose this game, and I think he's probably right. Duke in the royal blue and white. Wins the tap. It's Grant Hill, the outstanding freshman. Lofting it in for an opening basket for Duke. A near steal by Thomas Hill. Evans with the three. And play against an Oklahoma State club. Your defense, instead of starting from inside out, has to be outside in. You've got to protect the perimeter. Full court pressure. Hill to Hill. Uh, a mismatch. Thomas Hill is being played by Price, who's too small for him. See if they try to post up inside because they want Mullins playing over there on Grant Hill. Holmes tried to switch off. He got caught, and Leitner lays it in. Good job by Christian Leitner posting up, posting up so high. He had Holmes on his hip. Underneath Webster. What a pass off the dribble by Evans. 
Hurley breaks the press. Thomas Hill loses control for a moment, but he was fouled. Fouled by Brent Price. We see the high post here by Leitner. He sets the screen. Holmes tries to help out on Evans, but he does. There's no help from the backside, so Christian Leitner gets, Leitner gets the easy layup. Thomas Hill was at the line to shoot two, a sophomore from Lancaster, Texas. What a big game this is today for Thomas Hill. His father's here. He is the assistant athletic director at Oklahoma. I talked to his dad at length yesterday, a wonderful fellow, and he I asked him, since he was a track man, why his son didn't become a track man. He said he did up to a point, and then he wanted to excel in something that his father had not, so people wouldn't continually put that pressure on him, which is something I think a lot of fathers ought to take a look at. Rebound by Webster. Sooners push it up court. Beautiful pass. To Holmes, and he knocks it down. A look away feed right on the money. And a near steal by Evans. They nail him on the foul. Second time today we've seen Evans off the dribble make the perfect pass down through. You notice Palmer was trailing, had his back turned on the ball, which you can't do against this club, and Hurley couldn't even get his hand up in time. Just beautiful pass. Seven five, Oklahoma. Antonio Lang has come into the game to replacing Crawford Palmer. I think the reason for that is Palmer not getting back on defense. Lang much quicker. It's Thomas Hill. Run down by Grant Hill. Hurley penetrates. Offensive. And if I have a criticism of Hurley is that he sometimes tries to penetrate and become aggressive when the opening is not there. There was no place to go. His offense was not set up. Bad turnover on his part. Webster doing a nice job of stepping in and drawing the charge. Patton and man-to-man -man by Duke. Full movement, looking for some lobs inside by Oklahoma. They love the lob from the wings. Evans, another three, and again it's good. There was a case where Hurley tried to pull over and trap. He's got to stay with Evans, who's posting up outside the three-point line. Grant Hill lost the dribble. Last touch by Oklahoma. And Mike Krzyzewski made the point that they have got to get into a half-court offense to make Oklahoma play half-court a little bit in this game. At this point, the tempo is all Oklahoma's. Out high, Hill, that's a three. Out of bounds play, which Oklahoma worked against this morning with Tubbs, and I'm talking about Coach Tubbs and his assistants, playing the part of Duke. They were three for five making shots against uh, their first team defense. Webster misses, Hurley gets the rebound, starts the break. Behind the back and over to Hill. Beautiful move. Webster pulls it down for Oklahoma. Notice how Evans' head is up all the time when he's coming up court on that dribble, looking for somebody to hit. Well, he finds Webster on the baseline. Don't think that's unusual. This outstanding shooter at 35 against Texas so far this year be an explosive score. Hill drills it inside off Lang's hands, chased down by Mullins. Sooners on the steal, come right back, though Duke turns it back. Grant Hill got a hand on it, knocked it over to Hurley. You noticed him that time, Duke had three men back, Oklahoma only one over half court. Probably not a good move by Evans to throw it. Nothing there. Leitner driving. Offensive. One of the things that will be tough for Christian Leitner or anybody, any big man that plays Oklahoma this year, is Oklahoma does not have great size, but tremendous quickness. That's why I think some low post activity by Duke right now, trying to get Holmes in some trouble, is what they've got to do. Box set for Oklahoma now with Price down low, trying to get some screens to come out for the jump shot. There you got it. Makes a move on Hill, releases, and as you expect, 
excellent offensive set for Oklahoma, and Hill has got to realize and force Price to put the ball on the floor. He wants to take that jump. Oklahoma six for seven from the floor. Here's a freshman, Antonio Lang, banking it in. Basket by Tony Lang. Big mismatch now with Lang in the game. Quickly, though, on the transition, it's Webster for Oklahoma. That was really Leitner's fault. He realized Lang had to run the length of the floor, and he was waiting to pick up Holmes instead of taking Lang's man for a second. Jumper, Grant Hill. Lang can leap. And he scores back-to-back -back buckets for Lang. So Leitner's getting back quick. Holmes is not there yet. Leitner has to pick up whatever big man comes down the floor first and then make the adjustment. A lot of body inside between Lang and Webster. And they've caught it. They call it on Lang. Foul is called on Lang. Third team foul against Duke. Timeout on the floor. And a timeout on the floor. Oklahoma. Six for seven from the floor and leading. Here's what I was talking about in regard to Christian Leitner, who you'll see is the first big man back. His man is way down here. The ball in Evans' hands. Webster's going to break inside. Lang can't get there in time. Watch how the ball goes through. Leitner should have been back. Leitner lets his man run right by. No chance for Lang to go 80-some feet to catch up to Webster. Leitner's job, first man back, pick first man through. Oklahoma inbounding. Leitner knocked it away. A lot of teams playing man-to-man -man out of bounds to stay in their aggressive mode, allowing a lot of cuts and screening inside to get an easy basket. Around the perimeter, Evans with another three. He now has nine points. Hill dishes, but he traveled first. Two freshmen on the break. Duke trying to go right over the top of the press. Mike Krzyzewski not believing the call. Four Duke turnovers in the first four and a half minutes. Evans working on Hurley, but the steal by Duke and Leitner comes up with it. Jim, a new technique that you see a lot of kids developing right there, and that is against their first team using the Duke out of bounds plays. Tubbs, were, they were hitting all kinds of shots and Tubbs capped it off by a two hand set from about 25 feet for a winner. <laughs> Great pass and some block. Mullins is rejected, however, by Grant Hill. This pass is thrown almost from half court. What wrist action on that. You can see Mullins playing hide and seek on the inside on Hill. Not much you could do right there. Mullins, Mullins will shoot two. The foul on Hill. Talking about sets shots from 25 feet. You dusted me off yesterday in a game of horse. Jim, I don't talk about old times. <laughs> that was pretty fresh yesterday. Mullins shooting the free throws. Was the sixth man on Oklahoma's final four team back in 88. The team that lost in the finals to Kansas. And talk about a, a guy that didn't play a lot of time last year or two years ago and had that 50-minute game against Colorado. Seems that players at, at Oklahoma accept the minutes that they're going to get and wait their time. Palmer's supposed to catch that ball. Mm -hmm. It was a good pass by Hurley. He wrapped it right around the defender. Duke basketball. Now McCaffrey comes in. Bill McCaffrey. Second leading starter, a uh, scorer for Duke, and normally a starter. He comes in for Thomas Hill, but he's been uh, nursing a sore ankle. Number 23, Brian Davis. Brian Davis checks in also for Grant Hill. Oh, we watch, watch McCaffrey. A much better perimeter game on the floor right now with McCaffrey in there. Now called on Mullins. Good help, though. You, you can see that Mullins understands, being a fellow that's been around for a long time, understands they can't let Leitner get it going big on the inside down low. And a good job by Leitner to continue with that action as if he was going to shoot to draw the two-shot foul and a great free-throw shoot. Led the ACC last year in free-throw shooting at 
six foot ten inch sophomore. That doesn't happen many around the country. 86 percent this year. And at 86 percent, he's 10 percent behind the best free throw shooter on the team, which is McCaffrey. He's only missed one all year. Six points for Leitner. Duke is within four. McCaffrey on Price now. Turnover. Fourth turnover for Oklahoma. Evans might have had it too easy too early, Jim. He's trying now to make the big play on every pass. Nothing there. There's a bad pass. Yep. Leitner trying to find Brian Davis, but two Sooners were back. That same situation. You're down for the object if you're Duke. You're starting to get your inside game going now. Is not try to break with a home run. No one touched it, so Oklahoma brings it in under its own basket. See Davis working on Mullins. He's a great defensive player. This is a three by Evans. He's finally missed. There's that offensive rebounding of Holmes. Palmer throws it right to Evans underneath to Holmes, and he scores. Well, a critical mistake. You're better off putting that ball down and out of bounds than throwing it back under the other team's basket. Guaranteed two as opposed to just a walk in violation. Let them have it and have to work for it. Two man inside game now. Ball is stripped free. Jump ball situation. The possession arrow belongs to Oklahoma. Duke trying to get the two big men involved in the half-court offense. A little high-low post action. Number 21, Lang returns the Blue Devil lineup. Lang Antonio pushing. Lang, very effective early, checks in for Palmer. Palmer's brother played at Dartmouth last year. Jim moving on into the pros, seven foot one. Playing for the Utah Jazz, Walter Palmer. Away from the ball, a foul called on Webster. Those, Webster. Those two players have tied up elbows with each other the minute that they get in the half-court set. Last time it was called on Lang. Early driving on Mullins. Tough for Mullins to stay with him. Pass outside for Leitner. Takes the shot instead and scores. Felt the double team. You can see this inside game really being effective for Duke now. Don't turn off. Price. Good defense. Back down to Mullins. Time to get a screen for Price. There he got one, went inside the screen. Holmes over Leitner. Air ball retrieved by Davis. Hurley forces it up. Stripped from behind by Mullins. On the floor, it's Davis. And a near follow by Lang. And a foul on Oklahoma. Second foul on Webster. Team foul number five, and there are five unbeaten. Billy, headed by Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, but not unscarred after what's taking place uh, there this week. Ohio State with that win over Georgetown on a neutral floor at Vegas today. Uh, you have to remember Alonzo Mourning did not play for Georgetown, but still that shows that Ohio State with it, what has been up to that point a very weak schedule is for real. Jimmy Jackson, a big game with 17. Substitutions for the Sooners. Brian Salye comes in along with Roland Ware. Different kind of team now. You've got three power players on the inside. Mullins moves to the backcourt and puts Price in basically the playmaking position. Leitner will get a breather as Palmer returns. Lang already with three offensive rebounds in the first eight minutes. Expect now, Jim, to see Oklahoma really pound the offensive boards with this trio that they have in there in the front line, particularly with Leitner on the bench. Price driving, stripped away. McCaffrey out ahead. Felt the block from behind. He thought Ware would go by him with the attempted block. Might have been walking on that play. Here's the power inside game now. Holmes is short. Palmer has it. Duke can take the lead with this possession. Defense, 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 defense. 
Mullins forced it. Price picked it up. Two on one. He should have given it back. He had Mullins open. Salye. Salye You expect that offensive board play now. Shaky ball handling here by Duke. They get it up court. Mullins realized McCaffrey wants to shoot from outside. Lang double dribble. We're near the midway point of the first half, and Oklahoma continues to stay in front. And Oklahoma has forced 10 turnovers to this point. And Billy, we were talking about the baseball pass earlier. Oklahoma really works on it. What they do, you see Evans throwing a perfect strike there for the layup on the inside against Loyola Marymount. It does not happen by accident. Mike Krzyzewski made a good point about Oklahoma being a disciplined team. They work on this baseball toss constantly in practice. I'd say 10 to 12 minutes a day at a minimum. And that's why they execute so well in the break against somebody that doesn't get back. Price now in the lead guard position. With Evans out. Salier back out. Mullins, a good outside shooter. He nails the three. Double-team pressure. Hurley's got to look way up floor here. Nobody coming back. Mullins fouled him. Oklahoma now on the court with Salier, Ware, Price, Mullins, and Holmes. We talked about the durability of Hurley, and there was a good case. He was double-teamed by two fellows much bigger. But nobody from Duke came back to help create a passing lane for him. That's a mistake if they continue to do that. Oklahoma now with 16 fouls. And we're not quite midway through the first half. Double team trap. Davis is open. Good quickness on the traps to recover. Price doing it. McCaffrey driving. Stripped away. Leitner. And Christian Leitner has 10 points. He leads the team in scoring, rebounding, steals, and dunks. A misfire by Mullins. But where has it? That was touched by a Duke player, I believe. Unfortunately so, because Mullins was posted up at the three-point line for another shot. Number 33, Grant Hill turns to the line. And Mike Krzyzewski making a move here, wanting a better shooter on the weak side. He's got, he'll have now McCaffrey and Hill. If, if Oklahoma's going to play that trap, they should be able to go cross-court to one of those two for a jump shot. Grant Hill in for Davis. For a back cut on the inside. There it is. Rice in traffic gets there the pass to Ware. Nice assist. Beautifully executed by Oklahoma. They brought their offensive set out a little higher. Hurley will take the open shot from three. And there's a case where Bobby Hurley did not allow his big players to get down inside. When they were effective, they started their inside game rolling. Thomas Hill comes in for McCaffrey. McCaffrey, of course, still favoring that ankle a little bit, Jimmy. Not as quick to get his shot off as he had been prior to hurting it in the Michigan game. You could see it on that fast break sure. basket also when he waited for where. Mullins takes the shot. Leitner. Fouled by Salier. Now they're in the bonus. One and one. Coming up for Leitner. Jimmy Salier has one of those necks like the guys you've been covering. <laughs> <laughs> College football. Yeah. You know, he was recruited here by Barry Switzer as a tight end. He elected to go well, the base basketball route instead. He'll take Keith Jackson's place, I guess. Yeah. I'm telling you. First, you got Mayfield. another tight end on this team, Ricky Brady, who actually plays football for Oklahoma and doubles in basketball. Then they go to that, as they call it, two tight end formation That's here right. on the floor later today. Well, it's my understanding, you know, they've got one true high school All-American in basketball, but they have two true high school All-Americans from football, and those two at, at the tight end position. So, Billy Tubbs taking advantage of good recruiting by another coach. Leitner hits them both. Duke still within that same range, it seems, down by four. 
Rice with the ball has only scored two points, only attempted two shots. But he's being patient. He's not trying to force the act coming off that big 56 point game. Here he is. Working on Hill. Dishes to Holmes. The big guy from the outside nails it. Holmes 6 7. And the top rebounder showing a nice touch on that one. And there was a case. Leitner came back to create a passing lane. Salier called for the foul. As opposed to those passes that Evans was throwing earlier in the game, if you're going to throw a 35-foot pass in basketball, you've got to have some zip on it. That one was almost a lob. Salier just a little bit late getting there. But the pass created the opportunity. Curley, 67% from the line, shooting a one and one. And for a young man that handles the ball as much as he does and will go to the line as much as he does, particularly at late points in the game, to let him shoot a lot better percentage. One of two. Holmes gets the rebound. Holmes told me he's going to lead the nation in rebounding this year. Be quite an accomplishment for a 6-7 player playing on the team without a dominating center. Grant Hill forced the steal, and it comes back to him. Hurley out ahead. Hurley will take it over Mullins, who makes the rejection. Tremendous block. Leitner over to Hurley. Bad decision. Yeah, Hurley gets his moxie up, tries to go ahead and take it in against a bigger man. Nothing there. And then compounds it on the second play by trying to drive when there was no alley. There's the block. Beautiful jo job by Mullins. Sooners with a five-point advantage. You see what they've done with Holmes. They're bringing Leitner outside, trying to figure they have a much better advantage inside. Holmes again from the outside. Run down by Leitner. Hurley's now out of the game. McCaffrey is in. Well, I would really go and press McCaffrey now. They're going to put wear on him. With that bad ankle, it's taking away some of his quickness. You can see he's a little shaky with his ball hand. Finds Palmer. <laughs> Off the glass, no good. Salier the rebound. Oh, what a leap. Huh. Big high pass intended for Ware. Duke makes the play, however. Duke may have to put Grand Hill at the point. Here they are now because McCaffrey is going to have some problems handling that ball. In traffic, Salier gets Leitner's rebound. Price driving and a push off on Thomas Hill. Jim, on that last play with Leitner down the inside, excellent defensive coaching by Oklahoma and the fact that none of their players tried to block his shot. They all positioned themselves defensively to be ready for the rebound defensively and making sure that Leitner's body couldn't get enough room to get a good shot off. Well, Martin Keene has checked in for Oklahoma and the Sooners with a five-point lead. Nance along with Billy Packer from the Lloyd Noble Center on the Oklahoma campus. 11th ranked Oklahoma leading number nine Duke by five here in the first half. Leitner has scored 12 points for Duke to lead the way, but the Sooners 59% from the floor and have scored now 13 points off Duke's 11 turnovers. Price, 56 points in his last outing, has been held to two thus far. Evans is back in for the Sooners, inbounding. Ware double teamed, takes the shot, air ball, Holmes follows, spins out, and a follow by Ware. Early back in now after the timeout for Duke. Here's Davis open. Davis on the rebound. Worried about getting the shot blocked instead of laying it up soft. 
Price showing a lot of patience out here today. He got fouled on that one and hit it anyway. A three. He made 11 threes last Saturday. That's the first three for him. Five points in all. Leitner slow getting down court. Hill back out to Hill. Grant finds Davis on the baseline. Off the glass and a foul on Keen. You can see, Jim, that the loss of McCaffrey on the perimeter taking that jump shot when, when Oklahoma tries to double team is really hurting Duke because there's reluctance on the part of Hill and Davis to take the jumper from the sides. McCaffrey has just been amazing so far this year, but again, that, that ankle injury has uh, prevented him from getting a lot of minutes both today and last Wednesday against Harvard. There's a player on the Duke bench, Greg Kubek, who has, throughout his career, had some games where he came in and was able to light it up from the three-point line. He's a senior. Maybe called on before too long. Co-captain of the team, Kubek. <laughs> Davis drops them both. Twelve free throws attempted for Duke. Only two for Oklahoma thus far. But an eight-point edge for the Sooners. Home from the free throw line. Well, for those who think that Oklahoma just runs and guns, they are showing some excellent half-court execution. Well, near the conclusion of this game, Billy and I will select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Playing that zone right now, looking to trap. Well, Grant Hill hits the shot to stop an 0 for 5 Duke streak. Four points for Grant Hill. Holmes underneath. Keen, good block. Leitner got a hand on it. Hill on the rebound. Early driving, there's a penetration yep. move you don't like. No place to go. Price coming back with it. Back out to Keen, the trailer, and a blocking foul on Duke. Jim, sometimes you think that Bobby Hurley predetermines what he's going to do instead of letting the game come to him. He just put his head down and drove to the middle. Nothing there. It looks like Leitner is very slow getting up here. Might have got one of those kneecap to kneecap jobs. And here you see, just put your head down and drive in there, and there is no place to go here. There's nothing in there even if you were successful. You can see four Oklahoma players there, three Duke players behind you. Palmer is back in for Duke. And Leitner, shaken up, will get a rest as they examine the left knee, or the right knee. Jim, it's like one of those you know, hitting your elbow. You just happened to get stunned for a minute. I believe he got one of the kneecap to kneecap. Be back in there shortly. It gives Billy Tubbs an opportunity to rest Holmes. Keen makes one of two. And a foul called on Keen. That is now the tenth, tenth team foul against Oklahoma. And I know that all of you have been watching some college basketball already this year. Some great games early, but there are some new rules, and one of them is once a team reaches 10 team fouls, it's an automatic two-shot free throw shooting situation. And both of these clubs obviously very good from the free throw line, so that's something that they can build on. You know, when you, you think of Keen getting into the ball game, this club would have had Jackie Jones in the front line, who would have been one of the premier players in the nation this year. And also Damon Patterson, who may, they'll find out Wednesday whether he'll be eligible. So a club that uh, would have been very strong up front. Billy, some of the rule changes going into the year. Again, the two free throws on the 10th team foul. And, and three, three uh, of course, when you're shooting a three-point shot, if you miss it. Palmer makes one of two, and a great tip by Grant Hill. Six now for Hill, and Duke is within six. Webster. Oh, he's got a nice shot. 
gets it up in shooting position immediately off the pass. The freshman has eight. Do you like the uh, the 10 foul rule, Billy? I really, you know, haven't had time to watch it. I, I think that people ought to pull off when they make new rules like that. Let it take place for a year, get the statistical information, and then make judgment. They got a hand on Hill's shot, but it still goes in on the soft touch. Good and defense. a steal by Thomas Hill, but he can't control it. A point with Mike Krzyzewski yesterday about getting back on defense against a club like Oklahoma. Don't go back down the center of the court. Go back down and fan out because they're looking to throw the long pass to hit the three-point shot, not just get the layup. And Evans pass. Well, he let wear a little bit too much. Well, excellent defense by Hurley. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Along with Mike Francesa, coming up on the Prudential at the half, we'll have scores and highlights from today's action, and Mike will hook up with Billy Packer for a discussion on some timely topics on the college basketball scene. And Billy, Mike, and I know it feels like 26 below out in Norman, but we also know that Coach Tubbs tends to turn up the heat for his guests there, doesn't he? Well, he does that. You know, you fellas have been wearing too many football helmets. We play basketball indoors. It's not below here. Matter of fact, my broadcast partner, Nance, came to the game without socks on, so... <laughs> This is the real sport, fellas. I've been on the road too long when I forget <laughs> to pack the socks. Mm. You could have wore those white ones you worked out with yesterday. No, that you don't have to great. have a fashion statement. <laughs> would have gone well with my black dress shoes. Here's McCaffrey outside. McCaffrey, McCaffrey thought he got fouled on the shot, but hit it. Three by Evans illegal screen on Hurley he wanted to switch by McCaffrey now there he's showing emotion that as a leader you don't need to show McCaffrey should have helped out on the switch he didn't no sense showing your displeasure there Keen doing a good job of reaching in and knocking it away anytime you stop a three on one break he's done a great job defensively Duke has made one three-pointer. Oklahoma six, led by Evans, four for five from, from out of far. So you can see this zone they're playing, looking to trap whenever they get the opportunity. Beautiful Leitner pass. Takes, well, he was going to take the shot, decides to get the assist instead to Thomas Hill. That was beautiful. I personally do not think that Oklahoma can do well. You can see what's happened here, Jim. The basket on that dunk has been pulled down. The rim has. Didn't. And I think if they go back up and reset it, there it is, it's pushed it back up. That Kermit Holmes knocked it back in place. You can see against this 2-3 zone, Duke just hits inside, post up at the middle, good back cut by Hill. Price not able to handle him with that size differential on the inside. Hill an excellent leap. His father said that he felt if he'd have continued in track, he could have been an outstanding hurdler. He made a couple of references to track. His father, Thomas Hill Sr., was a bronze medalist, 1972. Olympics in the high hurdles. Skying high on the jumper is Webster, his 10th point of the game. Smart move to pull it up. Grant Hill. Oh, what a leap! What a follow! That again, Thomas Hill. I wonder how long Billy Tubbs is going to stay in that zone. It's not aggressive at all, and that's not Oklahoma defense or basketball. Duke taking big advantage of it. Eight points for Hill. Evans another three. Five for six now in the game, and 15 points. Well, before Price broke the record with a big three-point onslaught against Loyola Merrim. Evans was the one that held the three-point record here. Hill takes it and nails it. Grant Hill. Just inside the three-point stripe. Uh, hitting the ball away after it went through. Billy Tubbs wanting the technical. Now, what will happen here, the officials will warn both teams. And then it will be a technical for anybody that does it. You'll notice here, the officials are going to warn both teams. Do not touch the ball coming through the net. 
Number 21, Lang. And either team that would do it at this point out would be guilty of the violation. Ball goes through. You see Hill knock it away. Now, they've warned both coaches now on both teams. So it'd be kind of unfortunate to figure if Oklahoma got one, they should at least get one. A not so subtle way of uh, preventing the team from inbounding it quickly and fast breaking you right off the basket. Obviously, the reason for the rule. And Price. Hill outside with the loose ball. They wanted to pick back up now. They wanted to get out of the zone, but too late. Is Hill showing some talent? We have an arc on that one. Pass right off the hands of Keene, a turnover. Well, with a little more than a minute to go in the first half, Duke can cut into a four-point lead. Halftime, Greg Gumbel and Mike Francesa. The scores and highlights of football and basketball action from today, the Prudential at the half. Jim, I think any good passer has to realize who's the man that he's throwing the ball to. In the case of Keene, he does not have the hands that Webster, Mullins, or Holmes has. He has to be a little more careful about trying to dart it inside. The man to man goes Tubbs. He wants that defense to become aggressive again. Well, Hurley back in and out high. Most freshmen have to think rather than anticipate. In the case of Hill, when he gets so that all he has to do is anticipate, he is going to be some feeder. Keene gets the rebound off the Thomas Hill miss. And Hill reaches in, commits the foul. His second. They're into a one and one situation. You mentioned earlier, Billy, uh, Jackie Jones. He was the newcomer of the year last season in the Big Eight, but he did not qualify academically and did not come back to the Sooners, trying to play some pro ball over in the Canary Islands and now is back in the States. But Oklahoma has had the newcomer of the year in the conference six of the last eight years. You got to think Brent Price is the leading candidate to take that honor this year. You have to say that this thing is Oklahoma club. They lost 87 percent of their scoring, 80 percent of their rebounding. You know, Skeeter Henry, William Davis, Jackie Jones, Tony Martin, Smokey McCovery, Damon Patterson. There are not many programs in the country can lose that quality an athlete and come right back and be a top 10 contending team. 25 seconds left in the half. Hurley, Grant Hill, McCaffrey, Davis, and Lang on the court for Duke. You want one shot right here. You can see Oklahoma back to that pressure man-to-man. -man. Mike Krzyzewski's had a long time to rest late. Better get the shot off. Hill does. Goes does not get the favorable roll. That's the end of the first half with the score. Oklahoma 50 and Duke 45. Greg Gumbel and Mike Francesa will be back with the credential at the half after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the Prudential at the half. Sponsored by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel along with uh, Mike Francesco. Welcome to welcome to my Francesca, that is, and welcome to the Prudential at the half. Our score at halftime is Oklahoma leading Duke by a score of 50 to 45. Uh, the question is, do the Blue Devils have the guns to overcome the Sooners in the second half? I think they can. The Sooners shot 7 of 11 from 3, and they turned Duke over 13 times in the first half. Duke has got to be patient. Hurley has to break the press, but again, utilize their baseline advantage with Leitner and get the ball inside. So a little patience and get it inside. All right, Mike, now underway in Las Vegas, number one ranked Nevada, Las Vegas, leads Florida State by a score of 46 to 30 at halftime. And, uh, of course, uh, Nevada, Las Vegas, number one and unbeaten in four tries. Now, other scores today. 
Ohio State at Georgetown, and the Georgetown Hoyas did not dress Alonzo Mourning in this game, and they fell to their second straight defeat, 71-60 against Ohio State. There is Mourning sidelined by the strained arch in his left foot. And Dikembe Mutombo, number 55, with a nice jump hook in the lane there. But in the second half, here comes Ohio State. They grab the 41-40 lead right here. Number three, Mark Baker, all alone for the 15-foot jumper. And then watch Perry Carter. And this is just a nice move, Mike, against Mutombo. <laughs> Look at he doesn't know Matomo has no idea, lost the ball, lost the man, which way did he go? Ohio State, 17 points out of Jim Jackson, and they beat Georgetown by a score of 71 to 60. I guess the question is, how tough is, are the Hoyas without Matumbo? Well, or without uh, Alonzo Mourning? Without Mourning, they're hurting, Greg, and they're starting the freshman in the backcourt, and that hurts. We're not going to know about Georgetown maybe into February this year because of the freshman in the backcourt. We learned a little bit more about Ohio State. They'd had that real cupcake schedule, won a big one today, and I think Ohio State's a legitimate top 10 team this year. All right, Mike, and meanwhile, while number 10 LSU is uh, playing at Illinois and that is now a tie score at 60 to 60 LSU number 10 in the country and 6 and 1 on the year Marquette at Michigan the Wolverines a winner today by a score of 89 to 81 uh, Demetrius Caleb 23 points for Michigan Missouri a 90 to 51 winner over Grambling today Anthony Peeler 11 points in his first game back from uh, academic probation final score out of Kansas 101 to 69 the Jayhawks win it over Texas San Antonio Maryland defeated Lafayette to go four and three on the year. Matt Rowe, 26 points for the Terps. NC State wins its fifth and sixth starts, 99 to 60 over UNC Asheville. Notre Dame over Portland. The Irish break their seven-game losing streak. Lafonso Ellis, 23 points, 84 to 61. Notre Dame was the final. Earlier today on CBS in NFL action, it was the Lions against the Green Bay Packers in frigid Green Bay, Wisconsin. 36 below the wind chill. That's Coach Wayne Fonts of the Lions and would have to be identified so that you'll know it. Blair Keel, his pass here caught by Ed West, but the ball is stripped. And number 39, Ray Crockett returns it 14 yards for a touchdown and a 17 to 17 tie. Barry Sanders, 133 yards rushing, including this six yard dash around the right side. 24 to 17 was the final score as the Lions beat the Packers. Now, with that victory, the Lions eliminate Green Bay from possible contention for an NFC wildcard playoff berth. And that means that the Dallas Cowboys can gain an NFC wildcard spot if they beat the Philadelphia Eagles. That game comes up tomorrow here on CBS. Now, in other NFL action this afternoon at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the Raiders lead the Minnesota Vikings. 14 to 3 in the second quarter. Now, I want to remind you, coming your way tomorrow on CBS, doubleheader day of NFL action with the final wild card spot in the NFC playoffs likely to be dealt. Begins at 12:30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Then in our early game, most of you will see that Dallas Philadelphia game, the surprising Cowboys now in the driver's seat for that playoff spot. Others will see Tampa Bay against Chicago or the Rams against the Falcons. And then in our late game, most of you will watch the 49ers play host to the New Orleans Saints, while others will see the Giants against the Cardinals. Next up, Billy Packer joins us from Norman. He and Mike will discuss what went on in college basketball this week. Stay tuned. In time, all definitions must be revised. But when it came to redefine... Welcome back to the Prudential at the Half. Our score at halftime in Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners leading the Duke Blue Devils by 5, 50 to 45. Now, the news has been all bad this week for several major college basketball programs. Top-ranked UNLV got yet another letter of inquiry from the NCAA about possible recruiting violations. The Syracuse program was rocked by two separate newspaper articles outlining alleged improprieties within that program. And Texas A&M has notified the NCAA about possible rules violations in its basketball program. Billy Packer joins Mike Francesa and me now to explore these developments. And, and Billy, uh, let's just start by saying it's been a pretty damaging week in uh, college hoops. Well, I hope it is the beginning of the end, and I say this in, in, in all fairness to the schools and also the investigating process. I think the time has come to uh, grant immunity to all the players, uh, particularly uh, professional athletes who were the key players at various schools, as well as the kids that transferred. You know, most of these investigations center around kids who transferred. I think it's time to grant immunity so that we can get all the facts out on the table for schools around the country. I don't think it's isolated to Syracuse or Texas A&M and the UNLV. I think a lot of the things, and I read through that material very closely, a lot of the things that are mentioned are, are prevalent at a lot of schools around the country. Some very damaging, some very serious, but a lot of things it's time now, I think, to clear up the entire matter of just exactly what a college basketball, and in this particular case, college sports in general, all about. 
You know, Billy, when you look at it, uh, the Syracuse one, there are some damaging things there if they can be proven. And again, those smaller ones that we talk about, the little bits of uh, lunches or dinners or the little things that go on. And really, there needs to be a common sense approach here in that kids who fill buildings, 35,000 for basketball at Syracuse or 70,000 somewhere in the Big 8 for football, need to get a little bit of a share of this. I mean, it, it's unfair that a player be a star on Saturday afternoon and not have enough money to take his girlfriend to the movies on Saturday night. Well, I think that Sam Jankovic uh, made an excellent point, a man I respect a great deal, a man who was a very important to collegiate athletics, and he said we have a, a hypocritical system right now, and I would agree with him, and that's why I think maybe to eliminate all investigative process for maybe a period of 18 months to two years so that a new set of defined rules can be established. Uh, we don't, it, it is not isolated that Lou Holtz uh, admitted that he gave a, a player $20. Uh, I'd like to see the time right now come when all coaches could step forward and say, I have done the similar thing for an athlete, let's say, in need. Uh, and maybe in some of these other cases where a, a player goes out to a restaurant after a game and his tab is picked up by an alumnus, uh, are we really in a rules violation or have we got out of focus as to what really happens on the street day in, day out? All right, Billy, we'll let you and Jim Nance get set for second half action. Thanks very much for your thoughts. Once again, 50 to 45 is our score. That's it for this edition of At the Half. For Mike, uh, I'm Greg Gumbel. Uh, stay tuned. Second half action coming your way after this message and a word from your local station. The Prudential At the Half has been sponsored by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. Sharp Electronics Corporation. From sharp minds come sharp products. And by Reebok, it's time to play. Well, Oklahoma leading at the half, 50 to 45. Brisk weather, as it is much throughout the nation. Temperature in the teens, wind chill below zero, but some hot field goal percentages from the first half. Oklahoma, 61 percent turnovers. This high-paced game. There have been 24 turnovers in the first half. Oklahoma has been very, very good from three-point range. Seven of ten. Think of that, Jim. Twenty-one to three from beyond that line, and that's a that's a differential that's hard to overcome. Grand Hill wide open on the side. Leitner takes the three. Push. Hill follows. Got away with a the foul there. Holmes is absolutely correct. He was in perfect position. Hill pushed him out of the way. Hill has ten. Duke is within three. I'd say Duke is fortunate to be within three with that three-point differential. Sherlock Holmes, as they call him. Nice pump fake. Traveling. Now in the first half, Leitner led Duke with 12, and Evans with 15, all of his 15 on three-pointers. Also, Grant Hill had 12, Hill and Leitner both. And those 12 by Hill were very important because you remember Leitner was on the bench with that little knee in. They caught a breakdown on the yep. inbounds and Webster scores. Man-to-man -man defense against the inbounds pass. Tough to handle those screens. Grant Hill throws it out of bounds. You know, Billy had heard all week about how they turn up the temperature indoors. I was talking about how cold it is outdoors, but you remember a Georgia Tech game you did here a few years back where it was over 100 degrees, some people claimed inside. Exactly, and that young man's brother had a fine game for Georgia Tech. Talking about Price, he dished it outside, and a foul underneath. I don't feel it's so hot, though, today. No, not at all. Call number Certainly not affecting any of these teams playing in this game. Three personals now on Hurley. Now, there was a case that Billy Tubbs said that Price was in the act of shooting, but he was tapping the ball when he got fouled. A difference. Billy, Oklahoma is second in the nation in scoring average. Ben, so jo ben Joe, but Southern doing a job with 122 a game. Look at this steal. Thomas Hill take on Price. Pulls up and banks it home. 
Hill, an excellent defender, and he's doing the job on Price. He's got about three inches on him and a lot of reach. Holmes over Palmer. Palmer is just not getting it done today. I expect to see Lang in here shortly. They beat the press. Two on one. Hurley takes it. Score it. And a foul on Oklahoma. Incredible move by Hurley. He's got the two on one, but he doesn't get the angle for the pass. Palmer is open, but there's no angle here. Pretty good defense by Webster. No question, Webster stepped in. Now three personals on Webster. Hurley cannot complete the three-point play. Three-point Oklahoma lead. Ripped loose by Lakner. Look for Billy Tutts making time out here shortly. His club getting a little out of sync. Evans trying to do too much. Hurley has Duke within one. There it is again. It's Lakner again. To the lob. To Grant Hill, and Duke takes the lead. Billy Tubbs wanting to wait for the TV timeout, but I think he needs to call one. Their first lead since it was 4-3 to three in the opening minute. Right back to Oklahoma. Brilliant shooter. Sat out last year due to that injury, the bone spur problem. Actually got the year back. Yep. Mullins is whistled. That a red shirt. Three on Mullins. When I heard that Mike Krzyzewski was thinking about using Grand Hill as a point guard position back up for Hurley, I thought, boy, that's asking a lot of a freshman who's 6'7" and who really can play four positions on the floor, but he is going to be capable by midseason of playing that position. Well, there's some ice on the floor. That's the holdup for the moment. Well, we talked about the, with these officials have an effect. Well, they're all big eight officials. Jim Bain, not one of them, by the way, came down. He has a knee injury in his left knee. We normally see that outstanding big eight official in a game like this, but uh, he's out. Mike lost 15 pounds, a little bout of pneumonia earlier. He looks nice and trim now and healthy. Two players get together for a moment. You notice, uh, Jim, you, you leave nothing up to chance. Duke setting up an out-of-bounds play situation at half court, realizing they are going to be pressed because of his size, can go over the top looking long, but he doesn't decide to. Leitner almost turned it over twice. I thought he palmed it, Billy. Yep. Thomas Hill back to Leitner. Now he loses it. Nice job by Price. 16th Duke turnover. Here's Price. <laughs> Webster. We're talking about the medical redshirt. He played three games last year and then a stress fracture. And he was able to apply for a medical hardship and he got the year back, so he's only a freshman. Grant Hill off balance. Well, he's a fine player. He follows for two. And of course, his dad, the great pro football player, similar in the case of Hill. His father said his, that he turned to basketball because he didn't want to have to be compared as a football player with his dad. Talking about Calvin Hill, Grant's father. Thomas Hill really doing the job, blanketing Price over there. Mullins driving back of the rim blues, and it goes out of bounds, belonging to Oklahoma. Oklahoma number 21, Lang. Skip Price is Purdue, number 21, Lang. McCaffrey comes in along with Lang. Replacing Palmer and Hill. Duke switches on that out of bounds. Bryce draws a crowd and on the dish off, draws the foul. Jim, what Bryce has decided right now is that Duke is going to play him chest to chest out on the perimeter. Consequently, he's starting to put the ball on the floor almost every time to try to get that defender off him a little bit to open up some room for the three. Oh, 
Here he is working on McCaffrey. Takes the shot. Pulled down by Hill. Seven rebounds for Grant Hill. Lang on the baseline. And I, I really fault Hurley on that play. Why take it in there to Lang knowing there's nothing he can do with it when he gets it? Pull it back up. You're in a situation where you're one down. Possession is so much more important than trying to make the big play. Leitner called for reaching well, around. That's his third. Well, they've exchanged the lead here in the second half. Duke had it for a moment, but Oklahoma's back ahead. Well, in this game, you've got ninth-ranked Duke trailing 11th-ranked Oklahoma by a point. Billy, take me through the top ten this week. Well, UNLV and sets up one plus. Arkansas playing well. Beat both of these teams. Syracuse still undefeated. Arizona, uh, Oklahoma has a chance to go ahead of them in the long, longest win, win streak here. UCLA, excellent offensive club. Indiana, big win at Iowa State last night. Ohio State with another big win today. North Carolina coming on now. The Duke club here and LSU struggling today, but uh, with Shaquille O'Neal, who is putting up some numbers that have been outstanding. Make a good point. Uh, Arkansas beat both of these teams in the NIT. One at home, which was Oklahoma, and one at a neutral floor in New York against Duke. That's Oklahoma's only loss of the year. The Sooners 8-1. and one. Duke is 7-2. and two. The other loss to Georgetown. Here's a steal by Hurley. Let's see if McCaffrey tests that ankle. Lang on the offensive board. Lang will be a dominant offensive rebounder in time. He is today. That's four rebounds on the offensive end. Leitner got a piece and luckily almost picked up his fourth foul. Webster throws it up baseball style and banks it home. He's got now 18 in the game. That's the second time that Hill has turned the corner on Mullins and drawn the foul. See for Mullins now, four personal fouls. He's going to come out. You know, Jim, Duke has had nine different players in the last nine years that have started as freshmen on their team. And I was talking to Billy Tuz about that, and he said, how about our team? We've never had a situation where Oklahoma did not return a starter off a club. And here he has the club right back into battling for a top ten position. Steal by Evans. Holmes getting the lane. He walked. Followed by Webster. Webster. Holmes tripped a little bit and might have walked on that play. Oklahoma by three. Crowd coming to its feet. And they look for the lob on Salier, not there. Fifteen on the shot clock. Lang with a power move. We talked about Oklahoma not returning any starters this year. As a blocking foul is called on McCaffrey. Damon Patterson was a starter last year, and they you mentioned it earlier. They hope to have him back. They had hoped to have him back, in fact, today, but it's been held back now maybe for another week I Post saw phone. I saw where Anthony Peeler outstanding Missouri player who was uh, all conference performer last year will be eligible and will be playing tonight for Missouri so big eight gets a key one back Price Leitner got away with a foul Hill goes up high for the rebound bounce pass to Leitner there's a great Leitner. assist by Hurley 14 for Leitner. You're right, Jim. The reason is a great assist. He had the proper angle, and he had a man who he, he knew could catch the ball off that tough bounce pass. Webster from the free throw line. Webster. The freshman with 22. True high school All-American. Player of the year in Oklahoma two years ago. McCaffrey takes the three. 
He is just a shell of himself, Jim, in terms of his physical inability to get the shot off. Price with a three. Salyev. Off Grant Hill, and Oklahoma controls it. Leitner's exhausted on the floor right now. And he could pick up one of those fouls, just a cheap one. He's got three on him now. Duke can ill afford to have him out of the ball game. Brian Davis comes in. McCaffrey is out. Leitner really tired. Salier just putting that body on him down inside. Trying to pick up the fourth foul. Salier short. You can see Leitner has no legs to go for the rebound. And Davis with the rebound. Hurley puts it up and Hurley. comes back in front. That's there for that young man often if you'll pull up the foul line and take the jumper instead of trying to penetrate. He's got seven points. <laughs> Underneath to Evans. Beautiful touch pass by Holmes. I think right now, uh, Jim, Oklahoma is much fresher than is Duke. Leitner's tired. Hill is tired. And remember, in TV games this year, you only have three timeouts, so... Coaches try to save those and not rest their players. Mike Krzyzewski, realizing his team's tired, pulls it out in the little four corners. This is just to get a blow for Leighton. Twelve on the shot clock. Early doesn't realize it's down to eight. He's got to make his move. Foul before the shot. You're talking about that battle of the bodies inside. How about, how about Hurley and Evans on the outside? Well, you can see Hurley almost got the foul in retaliation. Timeout on the floor, Oklahoma by one. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Siemens. For leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering, depend on Siemens. Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. And by Visa, accepted at over 8 million places worldwide. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Well, the last word before kickoff. The NFL today starts tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern time before our doubleheader. Hey, early tomorrow, the Cowboys can clinch a wild card playoff spot with a victory against Philadelphia. That's because the Green Bay Packers lost earlier today. That headlines the early action. Late, you'll see either the Saints against San Francisco plus other action. Jimmy Johnson doing it up for the Cowboys. He used to be an assistant football coach here at Oklahoma. Hurley nails the three. three. Well, Mike Krzyzewski doing a terrific job on the sidelines as a coach there. He got an opportunity now to rest Leitner. He pulled that ball out and got Hurley. There's that chance to block it on the way up again. Hurley, three on two. Lang. Lang. Score it and a foul. A quick blitz by Duke. Jim, here's the defensive play I'm talking about. Kids now are blocking the ball on the jump shot on the way up as opposed to at the peak of the shooter. Hurley is excellent at it. Chris Corsiani from NC State, another one that does that so well. Small men that stay down and they get your jumper before you can release it. So Lang can make it a three-point play. Duke is leading by four. Another player in the country that does that very well is Billy Singleton from St. John's. Small team out there for Duke right now. Let's see if they go inside to Holmes a little bit. That's the charge. They call it. Great play by Thomas Hill. Two fouls now in the game on Price. You know, Duke had the nation's leading defender two years in a row. One of them sitting on the bench in Tommy Amaker. Billy King the other. Billy King being the other. And Thomas Hill is starting to fit that same kind of mold.
Open offense now. Hurley wanting the foul. You mentioned Tommy Amaker. What a smooth point guard he was for Duke. Now an assistant coach, full-time assistant. In his second season as a full-time assistant for Coach K. And the all-time assist leader at Duke. Great hustle by Price. Price takes it away from Davis. Back comes Oklahoma. Absolutely sensational play by Price. One of those big turnaround points in the game. Duke prepared to score and open up a margin, and now they pull it back to two. Could have led by six. Instead, it's a two-point lead. 24 for Webster. Turnover number 19 against Duke. Jim, with 10 minutes to go, so we're at half, we're at the half of the second half. Billy Tubbs is 98 and 0 when his teams score 100 or more. They are not on target to do that in this one. Leitner has returned for Duke. They shoot over Leitner. Rebound by Hurley. No, they're not on pace with it right now, Billy. Right. Looking to go inside the Leitner, who's had an opportunity now to get a little rest. Grant Hill. Rebound. And the rebound by Ware. Evans was looking to fire that pass down low. Webster with a rare miss today. Davis with the rebound. I admire Brent Price not trying to force up the shot, really not realizing he's being defended by an outstanding player. He's being patient. Leitner takes the three. He can make it. What a great touch for a big man. That's right. Bill Lambeer, only he can do everything. 17 for Leitner. No one there for Evans. Uh, Price faked the go back door cut and didn't go. I think they'd be smart to clean out and let Hill bring the ball up court against Webster. Wear Webster down a little bit on the defensive end of the floor. A five-point Duke lead. 8.30 to go. You notice Mike Krzyzewski turning this in now to a half-court game. Hill. Score it. Excellent move by Duke to make Webster concentrate on defense. He's got to play Hill. He really can't handle him. And if he has to work so hard on defense, it's going to take away from Oklahoma's big score today in Webster. Excellent pump fake and move inside by Hill, who can play well outside or in. So the nation's truly great freshman. Mm, I'm telling you, four fouls now on Webster. Hill can tie his high point game. He has 18 and eight rebounds. They get 19 now. That ties the point total he had against Michigan. That's two. Rice. Three for eight from the floor today. That's the first time he has been able to get Hill off his back to get a shot off. Off the leg of an Oklahoma player. Hurley has helped fuel Duke in the second half. He has nine points in the second half. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. It's the third largest crowd ever at the Lloyd Noble Center, opened in 1975. Over 12,000 here to watch Mike Krzyzewski and Duke challenge the Sooners. And Coach K talked to us about his strategy. 
I'm very hungry as far as being good all the time. You know, like that's that's our goal uh, to play well all the time because our team is playing no matter who our opponent is. And because of that, I think our team develops a lot during the year. You know, we don't try to peak in November, December, or January. We try to peak in late February or early March. Well, they uh, last year were ranked 15th at the end of the regular season in the polls, but still made it all the way to the championship game. Shot altered that time by Webster. Hill shot altered. Goes out of bounds off an Oklahoma player. Well, as we talked about the consistency of Duke, one thing they did not do, Jim, they did not hang their Final Four banner last year because not everybody off of that squad in the senior class graduated, which is uh, quite a precedent Mike Krzyzewski has set. Thomas Hill with a layup and an eight-point Duke lead. Billy Tubbs changing his offense now, a lot more cutting. Trying to get the ball down inside the homes. They have not been able to pick up that fourth foul on Leitner. Good hard-nosed man-to-man defense. Rice. And a block called against Duke. 7-13 left. Jim, I, I watched the Loyola Marymount Oklahoma game, and I have to say I did not enjoy that particular game as a pure basketball game. But I think the thing that impressed me most about Brent Price in that game is he had an opportunity to go into the 60s, and he was feeding the ball off to teammates at the end of the game instead of trying to put up another shot, uh, which shows that he is a team-oriented fellow, much as his brother uh, was at Georgia Tech and certainly has become one of the premier guards in the NBA. You know, Mark has not seen Brent play a game in person since he was in junior high school, but he will later this week in a holiday tournament. We'll be in to see Brent play. His father, Denny, is here today, and his mother. Davis lost control as he worked around Keene. It would seem that it'd be in Duke's best interest to make Oklahoma work a little bit more on defense, not try to go for the kill at this point. <laughs> Trying to get low screens for Price. Evans from way out in an air ball. They just can't get an inside game going at all. Leitner in to Thomas Hill. Back over to Hurley. Ryan Davis and Grant Hill, the other two players on the floor for Duke. Does Hurley have some stamina or does he have some stamina? I mean, he doesn't mind handling the ball every possession. They're going to make him work a little bit. Pull him out high. Good move. It's like Kenny Anderson this week playing 55 minutes in that triple overtime game against Georgia. Not a good shot by Hill. Leitner brings it back out. This is not a delay. This is just to extend that defense a little bit. Try to get something working inside. 51 straight wins at home for Oklahoma. Ah, what a block. Davis on his follow was fouled. And that 51 game home winning streak in all kinds of trouble with 547 left. Akeen did a great job blocking that ball because Davis had a dunk in mind. Davis at the line. Billy Tubbs in his tutorial splendor over there. One of the real sharp dressers in college basketball. This Oklahoma streak with a win today puts it ahead of Arizona. He doesn't play to what later in the week. Tied with Arizona, yeah. yeah. 51. Could break it. And they're ahead. Arizona plays Providence at home tomorrow. Here's Mullins from three. Hurley. Oh. Hammered by Keene. He's a gutty kid. That's nine team fouls against Oklahoma 
And Billy, next week, our road to the Final Four continues with Kentucky against Louisville. Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern. There's nobody doing a better job with his ball club so far this year than Rick Pitino with that club at Kentucky. I've seen them play on numerous occasions, and he is maximizing the performance of every kid on that squad. Keen goes out. Webster comes in. Not a good free thrower. Misses the front end. Davis tried to knock it away. And Davis and Hill really on the wings, doing a good job preventing that ball from being swung from side to side. Webster is fouled. Now called on Hurley and Billy that's four now on Hurley and that would mean McCaffrey with a bad leg is not capable of coming in at this particular time of the game probably mean that Grand Hill will have to go back and assume some of those duties no Jim uh, talking about the Thomas Hill, when Mike Krzyzewski saw Thomas's dad last night here at the arena when they came to work out, it was interesting. The first thing he said to him, did you get your boys' grades for the first semester? His father said yes. He said, did a nice job, didn't he? It wasn't a basketball conversation. It was a conversation about how he's doing in school. Genuine. They don't go to Hill and try to get Webster out of there and foul in the foul situation. Remember, there are nine team fouls on Oklahoma. The next one, and Duke will be shooting two. Now, Mike Krzyzewski would like to see somebody commit a foul on Leitner. Yeah, 86%. Yep. Two on the shot clock, and Hurley banks it home. Second time today with the shot clock winding down. The first time he was fouled, that time he draws the two. 12 for the game, 11 in this half for Hurley. Back from five down at the half to lead by eight, Duke. And a foul called on the Blue Devils, Grant Hill, his third. When Brent Price wakes up tonight in the middle of the night, he's going to see Thomas Hill staring him right in the face. I mean, Hill has really challenging. See Webster standing at the line. The freshman having a big game so far. 26 points, 8 rebounds. His sister, Sharon, plays for the Oklahoma women's team. It's a program, Billy, that almost... Uh, was nixed. Well, you talk about bad timing. It was nixed at the final four, the women's championship last year, and you saw how that was uh, rescinded in a hurry, and rightfully so. A lot of talking inside. 28 for Webster, 11 over his average. Price on the foul. And that's the 10th team foul, third on Price. Uh, Davis really made an excellent judgment there. He caught the ball in the lob. He realized he had Hill alone, but he really didn't have possession of the ball. So instead, he made the good tight catch and then the high percentage play. Smart move by Davis. Davis the free line. number five, Bill McCaffrey. And McCaffrey comes in. Gives Hurley a breather. Mike Krzyzewski trying to steal two minutes for Hurley here. Davis 71% from the line. This is where you think you'll see Grant Hill bring it up for Duke. I think so. McCaffrey in time will be able to, but his leg is a far cry from being 100%.
Devils by eight. Not since 1987 has Billy Tubbs lost the game at home. That was the last game of the regular season to Kansas State, a one-point loss. 51 in a row since. Mullins, tough shot. Pulled down by Leitner. Really, Oklahoma can get something by popping inside the Webster, who's having the hot hand, and let him throw back outside. They're trying to make it too tough a play. There's Hill bringing it up. Has it taken away? Webster forced the turnover. Up ahead, Mullins slams it. Now Hill tried to get Duke. Now Maciszewski's going with the timeout. Duke calls the timeout. On our way back to the game, Greg Gumbel in New York with a reminder, tomorrow on the NFL Today, Terry Bradshaw and I will update you on the NFL playoff picture. Pat O'Brien will report on the aftermath of last weekend's quarterback devastation. And Leslie Visser will have the story of a Texas-sized turnaround that has put the Dallas Cowboys one win away from the playoffs. Join us tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern time on the NFL Today, the last word before the kickoff. Right now, back to courtside in Norman, Oklahoma. Jim Nance and Billy Packer and all of us at CBS sending our holiday greetings to you. In the second half, Duke has come back from five down to take the lead. Hurley, a big factor with 11 in this half. And Webster's been the main man for Oklahoma. But the Sooners have been out-rebound in this game, 36 to 25. Oklahoma has not been out-rebounded since a game against Kansas last February. That's a telling statistic. Mike Krzyzewski tried, tried to steal two minutes for Hurley and couldn't do it. Had to put him back in. They changed the press that time. Did not guard the man out of bounds. Webster wants it. They tried to get it to him. Over Leitner. Oh, what a shot. That was blocked on the way up, and he still kept it in control. Now has 30 for the game, and Duke's lead is down to four. Jim, this used to be a football school. Davis. Basket by Graham Hill. What a difference in 10 years, huh? That's right. They'd be talking about bowl game now. Here they're talking about top 10. They say it's off the foot of Price, and it belongs to Duke. I thought that that ball hit Davis's foot. I think Tubbs is right on that one. Well, the Big 8 officials made the call right in front of the Oklahoma bench. See, you can see the ball hit right off Davis's leg. And now, to come back, Hill trying to do too much with the ball. With Hurley back in the game, he's got to give it back to Hurley and clear out. He is a smooth player, but this is not the time in the game to be smooth. Some defense. Forced by Hill. So Hill turned it over, but he comes back and makes the play to get the ball back for Duke. Yeah, I think just Spark put the ball in Leitner's hands. Try to draw a foul. Oh, oh Hurley threw the pass, and Leitner wasn't looking. And in fairness to Hurley on that one, he's got to protect the ball better. But there was no place for Leitner to go. Mike wants him to hold the ball out and take some time off the clock. Oklahoma attempting to cut into a six-point lead. This could cut it in half. Evans misfires. Nice try by Price to keep it in. But Hurley has it. Good judgment there. The top now to protect the ball. Mike Krzyzewski up off his feet, as is Billy Tubbs. Really trying to coach this one down a while, like two jockeys on a great horse. Call for traveling. Hurley tried to get a timeout from the official, who could not pucker up his mouth enough to blow the whistle. And the charge takes place. Hurley saw he was in trouble all the way across the court, but the tribal violation is called first. Oklahoma will have the basketball when we come back.
Boomer Sooner for the home folks at the Loyal Noble Center. And uh, timeouts remaining, each team with two. Keep in mind that Oklahoma has committed 10 team fouls. That means Duke will be shooting two fouls on every foul from here on in. Meanwhile, uh, Oklahoma would be in a one and one should Duke commit a foul right now. In yep. this half, Billy, look at the scoring by Webster and the rest of the Sooners. Yep, 20 to nine. You gotta be thinking. Go inside and back out for a three here. Try to get Hill to turn his back on Price. There it is. Davis. It works so much better to go inside first. You know, Christian Leitner is walking or running in, that, in a gate that looks like he's had some problem with that knee. It looks like it's stiffening up on him. 55 seconds to go. Duke by six. By eight, Thomas Hill having a big afternoon. A lack of concentration. He certainly is on both ends of the floor. He's really set the pace by not giving Price an opportunity to get off his shot. And there was Leitner, the big ball handler. Everybody concentrating on him. Hill just staying underneath. 16 for Hill and a great job on D. Making three, it's not there. Foul on Evans with 35 seconds remaining. That's probably a pretty good foul because of all the players in Duke's team want to put Hurley on the line. Hey, Billy, the lineup tonight on CBS. Uh, why don't you take the kids, followed by Lenny, broken badges, and candid camera Christmas special. That's all tonight on CBS. Check out Lenny. It's a, just saw Lenny, in fact, at a recent football game. You know, what's that fellow's name uh, on candid camera? Alan Alan Bunt. Bunt? When I was a kid, he looks just as young now as, you know, as a kid used to see him on that show. Those are, uh, those should be going in the historical almanac. <laughs> and Hurley strips that one. Forget the 66%. Difference is nine. Got to go out to the three. They take the short two with Mullins and call the timeout, leaving the Sooners with one timeout. But it appears to be a decisive lead for Duke. It's a lead of actually seven, 88, 81. Ninth ranked Duke with a seven point lead. It's 88, 81. That's the correct score, seven point lead. And having the basketball after an Oklahoma timeout. Jim, I thought it would have been a good idea to, to put McCaffrey in the game because you know Oklahoma is going to foul right away. Try to get the ball in McCaffrey's hands on the inbounds. Let him foul because he's a, you know, only missed one all year long. They've got a foul. They foul Leitner, and Leitner will shoot two. He's the last guy you want to foul. Fouls on other than Billets, other than McCaffrey. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, McCaffrey, what did you say, 28 of 29? Right, 19 in a row on the year. And if you know the team's going to follow the inbounds passer, try to get your man who's your best free throw shooter to get the inbounds pass. Four for four today, 17 points total for Leitner. We saw this young man last year, of course, in the Eastern Regionals, the MVP of the Eastern Regionals, two 23-point, a, 20, uh, a 23 and a 24-point game. Excellent free throw shooter. Made the shot that broke the heart of UConn. That's right. Evans with a three. They'll let him have the two. Just, I think you've got to throw it back out and take that three. Webster on the follow with a two. Oklahoma now 0 for 8 from three-point land in this half. The small day we've talked about Oklahoma's 51-game home winning streak about to come to an end. They've also won 75 straight against non-conference opponents here at home. Last team to beat them here was Nolan Richardson's Tulsa Club. That was that great team with Paul Pressey the year after they won the NIT. Duke cannot lose this game now. The reason they can't lose the game, Oklahoma out of timeouts, and they can merely hold the ball on the out-of-bounds for the five seconds. 
and two more five second plays gives them a, an automatic win. They don't even have to put it in play. Now look at Billy Tubbs over there and something interesting about him. He's coached at three different places in his coaching career. And the first year of coaching in all three places, he had a losing record. And then he goes gangbusters thereafter. A great program builder and maintains it. Jimmy, as I said at the 10 minute mark, they were not on schedule for 100 points, where they had won 98 in a row. I mean, 98 and 0, scoring 100. Duke shut them way down here in the second half. In fact, 33, 33 points right. yeah, in the second half. Now you don't even want to touch this ball. Let them score and just let it go. Price on the lay-in. The game is over. And so is the streak at home for Oklahoma. Duke trailed by five at the intermission and comes back to win it by five. 90 to 85. Well, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Thomas Hill for Duke, 16 points. And Jeff Webster with 32 from Oklahoma. I think even Webster's personal dictionary would define his own game today as excellent. But not enough as Duke wins it, 90 to 85, and $1,000 donated to each school's general scholarship fund. So for Billy Packer, I'm Jim Nance saying so long from the Lloyd Noble Center. Duke has won it here. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA championship.